I'm Maggie. Welcome to Experiments in Crafting. Uh, tonight I have a whole bunch more books to show you guys. And these, instead of being stitch dictionaries, they're crochet pattern books. Uh, last week I sort of stumbled upon an Amazon sale. Uh, they were offering uh, three books for the price of two. And it was actually a pretty good deal because it wasn't just buy two, get the cheapest one free. They actually took off the whole, like 33% off the total order, uh, which was nice because it ended up being a little bit better deal. Um, so I got nine books and seven of them are crochet books and two of them are sewing pattern books. And so I kind of flip, th I'll kind of flip through those and show you guys a little bit of each one and let you know some initial impressions. Um, and it looks like Amazon's three for two sale coincided with Target's three for two sale. So Target also was running a uh, buy two, get one free type of uh, sale in their book, movie, CD departments. Um, and so Amazon seemed to be running a very similar sale, probably to compete. So um, if you keep an eye out at Target or you notice that at Target, it might be back on in Amazon as well. Um, Target seems to run that sale like quarterly or so. So, um, anyway, before I dive in, I've also got a Lytherco box for tonight. Uh, Lytherco is a subscription box. Again, um, I've opened a bunch of these on stream, but it's just a subscription that I pay for and I like to share it with you guys. Uh, I have not unboxed this. I don't know what's in it yet. So, um, it'll be fun to find out together. A uh, handful of people watching, um, CZ and Crafty Caitlin, welcome, and welcome to everyone else who's out there watching who hasn't commented, but um, is just keeping an eye on the stream. Um, CZ says, uh, 97 in California. It is not that hot here, but it is hot. Um, the possible difference between here and California is it is miserably humid. Um, so most of California, I think is a relatively dry heat, but, um, it's, it's, it's 87 here and, and really humid. I don't know what the heat index was, but probably approaching 90. Um, so yeah. Uh, and Tracy, welcome. So, um, all right, I guess let's, uh, dig into some books. I'm going to stack these up and push them out of the way, and we'll set the Lytherco box off to the side. Um, top book. This is a pretty new book. Um, this is Crochet Ragdolls. Um, the designer on this is Ala Sasha. Uh, her whole name's on here. Sasha Blaze Van Wagtendonk. I'm probably butchering that pretty poor, pretty badly. Um, but a la Sasha is what you'd find her on a uh, Ravelry or, or something like that. Um, I think I've mentioned several times in the past when I pull out the, uh, the sheep's stone washed yarn. And I don't know if I've got any within arm's reach, but, oh, actually I do. It's in my crochet bag. I'll pull one out. Um... So these guys here, um, anytime I show this yarn, I mentioned that I made a giraffe. Uh, and it was like the cutest, most adorable um, ragdoll giraffe. And unfortunately, the ragdoll giraffe is not in this book, but a whole bunch of her other ragdoll patterns are. Um, and so I'll flip through here real quick and show you a couple of those. Um, we have searched high and low. No pictures of that giraffe exist, apparently. Um, I don't know how it happened. It was so cool and looked so nice. And not a single cell phone picture, professional picture, anything exists. Um, you know, we normally take pictures of everything I make and apparently doesn't exist. Um, Runaway Needle Red says the giraffe was adorable. Maybe? Did I show it on stream? Do we have a still from a stream, maybe? I don't even know if it's streaming. I don't know either. Anyway. Um, the giraffe pattern is not in this book. Um, but 
There are a lot of other cute ones. The alligator is one of my favorites. One of the nice things I found about just kind of starting in on this book is that really early on in the book, it shows a bunch of the rag dolls that made in all different kinds of yarn. And so you can you can pretty easily pick out pick out the sheep stonewashed like this uh, fox here is made out of that. Um, but you've got this purple. Let's see. This purple bunny here is made out of just what looks like a basically like a Red Heart Super Saver equivalent acrylic. And then you've got this little rabbit over here. Um, if I can tip it better. Uh, made out of what looks like thread. And so you can kind of see what happened um, when they basically made the same pattern out of two very different yarns. And so that's kind of a good reminder. Runaway Needle Red thinks that it's on Ravelry. So maybe there does exist a picture. I'll have to look through and see. Um, you have to add me. I did add you. It, it's just not a two-way. Um, so Ravelry does, like, friendships very weirdly. You don't, like, request, like, a Facebook friendship, and then you're linked. You have to request, or you have to add, and then I have to add. So, like, um, my husband's saying I didn't friend him, but I did add him. He hasn't added me. <laughs> um, so, let's see. There are animal families, so it looks like... A whole bunch of the patterns have a mom or dad and then a baby version. And so there's a bunny and a baby bunny, a crocodile and a baby crocodile, a dog, a puppy, a fox, a kit, a frog, a baby frog, a hippo, a hippo calf, a kangaroo and a joey, a monkey and a baby monkey, an owl and an owlet, a penguin and a baby penguin, and the lamb and the sheep. And then there's a handful of animals here that do not have... Uh, baby versions and that's the cat the elephant the horse the mouse the panda a princess which um oh it says other animals and friends princess a pug a robot and a unicorn and then there's some clothes at the end and so we can um kind of just flip through there's a lot of pictures and like little setups um i think the crocodile is adorable i'll show the crocodile pattern here so it looks like a pretty good picture i don't know how well that comes through um i don't want to show too much of the pattern so i'm going to kind of hand block it a little bit yeah okay so you can see the crocodile there the written patterns around it i don't want to share the written pattern um you know in vi like copy copyright violation or anything so but you can just kind of see there's a lot of pictures through here there's a lot of options um try and the owl's pretty cool I'll oh the penguins are cute we'll zoom in so you can see the penguin a little bit but lots of cute little animals um in this case almost all of them have stuffed heads but then they have a ragdoll body. And so you can see they're they're really cute gifts and they actually turn out really, really like I don't know. The it when they're worked in the the sheep's stonewashed yarn, they just look so professional. I don't I don't really know. The the finish on that yarn is really nice and the, the way the product turns out, it just really looks like you could have picked it up in an expensive little boutique. Um, and, and I don't know, I, I really like these little ragdoll patterns. I think they're cute little gifts. So there's a whole bunch of patterns in here. Um, the book retails for $22.95. I know that I paid quite a bit less than that for it. Uh, crochet ragdolls. Um, I'm sure that it's probably like $18 on Amazon and then I got 33% off of it on top of that or something in that ballpark. If it's 15 on Amazon right now. And then I still got 30% off. So, um, all right, moving on to the next one. The next one is 100 crochet. What is this? 100 snowflakes to crochet. Um, this is the one book that I had actually possessed before. Um, I 
checked it out from the library. I liked it well enough that I went ahead and bought it. Um, so this is by Caitlin Sinino, S-A-I-N-I-O. No, probably no, no second end. See, yeah, I'm not going to be able to pronounce that. I'm terrible at pronouncing names. Um, it's probably my biggest hang up when I'm reading, um, when I'm reading along on comments that I really trip myself up reading out names. Um, anyway, so if I flip this open, it looks like it is both patterns and charts and pictures. So I guess it's all patterns, charts, and pictures. Um, whole bunch of different options in here. Lots of cool snowflakes. I was going to see if there was a, like, picture of all of them. I think there is towards the beginning. Yeah. So they have kind of a photo index in the beginning. Um, and so you can kind of flip through and find the ones that you like. There is a really cool, um... I guess, project idea that I came across that you make a whole bunch of different thread uh, snowflakes and then you arrange them in the shape of a Christmas tree and you mount them on like a burlap backer or like a fabric backer. It looks really neat. Um, I came across the project on Ravelry and so it's, I don't know, it's pretty cool, but it's something that I've wanted to try out. And so here's a whole bunch of different snowflake patterns um, that can be worked up. And again, there's a written pattern for each of these and a chart. So relatively straightforward. You don't have to do these in thread. You can do them in a heavier weight yarn. You'll just end up with a much larger snowflake. So set this aside. Um, Let's see... Uh, next one is called Fair Isle Crochet Workshop, 15 products, 15 modern projects for the home. Um, and this is one of the books that I was less impressed with once I got it. Um, so it's mostly just charts. I don't know exactly what I expected it to be, but, um, it's mostly just Here's a chart, and these are like little blocks. They look a little bit like Minesweeper um, on an old computer where it's just like little blocks. And you're just supposed to work basically, I think, single crochet. And where the color changes, you're supposed to change stitches. And you just work the whole thing, and it's just a, a basically a pixel grid. Um, and then there's instructions on how to do that more effectively, but they're they're just not like... Like, I don't know um, if we can switch to the picture that's just over here. Like, this is just not really my taste, I guess. Um, it's kind of like a chaotic, like, stripey bunny with a heart and spots. And there's a lot going on there. And so, like, I'm probably never going to make this pattern. And I don't know. This book, I'm I'm kind of on the fence about and and leaning towards I probably wouldn't have bought it had I looked through it ahead of time um there are some more interesting things in here there's this like big poof that you can make for like a, a home decoration type of thing um there's some pillow patterns so this one i'm kind of lukewarm about so again this is fair isle crochet workshop um and and again it's mostly just pixelated charts that show you when to do color changes in a single crochet pattern. Um, all right. The next two are sort of related books. These are um, Edward's Menagerie, the new collection, and Edward's Crochet Imaginarium. And I'll go through them separately. Both are by Carrie Lord. Um, there is a third book, which I think is just called Edward's Menagerie, um, which is the original book. Those patterns didn't appeal to me as much. I kind of flipped through and looked at a variety of the patterns in there. Um, so there's the two books. And I'll flip through a little bit on each of them. So 
the Edwards Menagerie is 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 a little bit more typical in how it's designed. Um, there's basically just a pattern for every, uh, you know, there's a lot of instructions, tells you what size yarn to use. And then there's basically a standard form. So every animal in this book is made out, mostly has the same legs, the same body. Um, I think there's some similar heads. But when you get over to an individual pattern, so here's the bunny, it tells you how to make the head, the ears, um, and then use standard legs and standard body. So there's some pattern over here for the head and the ears, and then it says make standard legs, standard body. And then if you flip to the next one, um, it is a alpaca, and it tells, yeah, it's, it's pretty white. Um, it tells you to make the standard legs and the standard body and gives you different instructions for the head and the ears again. Um, and, and sort of the same thing all the way throughout. So there's a different head and a different set of ears for every animal, but they all have the same legs and body. So it it's a little bit cool because you get to sort of learn the different pieces. And so if you wanted to make an animal that wasn't in here, you could g flip through the book and find, okay, that's sort of the head that I'd like to make. And this is sort of the ears that I'd like to make and, and sort of figure out how to build your own animal. Um, and, and so I, I wanted it more as a tutorial for myself. Um, so the thought is if I wanted to replicate something I saw, I could learn how to make particular shapes and, and how to do the shaping better um, more than just wanting to make a whole bunch of stuffed animals. Um, I really wanted this as a sort of pile of options, I guess, for making all different types of things and, and learning how to make the shapes for all different types of things. Um, it's also the reason I bought the other book here, which is the... Uh, Imaginarium book. This book is laid out a little bit differently. So um, I'm going to flip to the back real quick. And again, there's a standard form that shows a head and a body in this case, not a uh, head and legs. And in this book, there's a tab for head, for arms, and for feet. And what you can do is flip through and make all kinds of different animals. And so as you flip, you can change the head and make just all kinds of different creatures. And then as you flip, the pattern is over on the other side. And so you can um, kind of just flip all the way through until you find a head that you like. And then the same with a body. Whoops. Same with a body. And, or, well, arms and same with legs. And so you can iterate through all these different uh, monster combinations and learn how to do all of the different shapes and um, I just I guess shapes is the best word for it. Um, so uh, there have been times where I've had to modify a pattern. Um, I made a uh, hiccup doll at one point. Hiccup is the hero in the How to Train Your Dragon series. And at the end of the first movie, he loses his leg in an accident. And for the rest of the series, he has a prosthetic leg. And it's it was relatively difficult because... Oh, spoiler warning. Yeah. Um, it, it's relatively obvious if you see a, an, you know, a trailer for uh, the later movies. But... Um, anyway, I had to make a doll and there were no dolls of him. And so I ended up just having to like sort of figure out the shape. And I thought if I had had a book like this, I probably could have adapted one of the fin shapes or one of, um, you know, the, the different style of legs to, to work for that a little bit better. Um, so that was kind of my thinking on on purchasing this book. 
my goal is not actually to make all of these crazy monsters, but it's just to to learn how each of those shapes are constructed. So that was that's where I was going with that. Vel says, uh, I find a pattern or two I like and then usually don't like the rest of the book, so I end up reselling them uh, and enjoy looking at the projects. That's a little bit how I feel in some cases. Um, the Crochet Ragdoll book, I think I'm probably going to end up using a, quite a few of the patterns out of there. Um, the Edward Menagerie books and the Edward's Crochet Imaginarium, I don't know how much I'm going to use, um, but... I bought them because I thought they might be interesting. The Snowflake book, I think I'm actually going to use quite heavily. Um, I kind of like the little snowflake patterns. And it's nice to do a thread project every once in a while. Um, next book up is Corner to Corner Crochet, 15 Contemporary Corner to Corner Projects by Jess Copham. Um, so I do have a Corner 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 to corner tutorial um, on my channel. This one starts out with some tutorial, shows you how to do the color changes more effectively, but these are basically just graph GAN uh, patterns. So there, there's a whole bunch of different patterns in here. I'm going to try and flip through to find a good picture, but I do like that they not only include a graph, but row by row instructions. So you... They walk you through when to change and how many in each row to do. And I think, I, at least I appreciate that, that there's there's both options. So here's like a, a baby blanket and there's some mountains. And you're really, you're working on a diagonal the whole way. Actually, you're working this way. And so when you get to here, you're working along this row. And just like this one little square has a light green. And then on the next row, two squares have a light green. And almost the rest is, there we go. So you've got one little square here with light green. And on the next row, you've got two. And as you build on a diagonal, you can see you're adding more and more color. And then all the way back out to no color over here. So you're working from this corner all the way to the other corner. So it's kind of cool. Um... I, I like that it's got a little bit more detail. Um, a lot of different options and patterns. There's a throw here um, with two different kinds of squares. So you can see some of the squares have black in the corner or black on the edge and some have white on the edge. Or they might actually just be rotated squares. I'm not sure if they're squares or rectangles, actually. Uh, looks like they've got different patterns for them. So they must not just be... 90 degree rotations. Um, I thought this pillow was really pretty. It's got kind of that Nordic pattern. Um, so there are, there are actually a few patterns in here that I think that I will attempt. So, um, and then some that are not really for me. Uh, like this one's a pillow with a bike on it. I don't really need that pattern. Um, but it's fine. It gives you a general idea of how to, uh, make any particular graph into a, into a thing, but that pattern just doesn't appeal to me personally, I guess. Um, trying to see if there's anything else really interesting to show. Yeah, it's probably, I mean, there's a few other small patterns in there, some other types of options in there, but, um, seems like a pretty good book. I really do like that. It's got written instructions as well as the graph. Some people have a really hard time following and keeping track of where they're at and are used to just following row counts. So, um, all right. The last crochet book that I bought, the other two are sewing books, but the last crochet book is probably my favorite of the batch. And that is a book of these teeny tiny little stuffed animals. Um, I think these end up being about the size of a ping pong ball. They, they're these mini crochet creatures. Um, most of them have little felt faces. Um, I can turn it around and show you this side too. You can see like the chicken's got a felt face there. Um, and this uh, 
hamster or guinea pig or something also has a felt face. But these are super cute. Um, there is a chart, weirdly enough, for most of them. Um, I'm not actually quite sure how I'm going to go about the chart. I'm going to try and not show too much of the pattern, but just the chart. Just real quick. It's a pretty odd chart, so I just wanted to show one of the examples. Um, so the chart starts out in a circle and then works in rows, but they would still be worked in circles. So I just think it's kind of an interesting thing. It'll take me a little while to figure exactly what's going on there. Um, find some of the cuter animals here. Uh, like the whale here is pretty cute. So I don't think there's any pattern here. But yeah, these little whales down here um, are pretty adorable. There's one a little bit bigger. So they're just little bitty. Uh, oh, look at the bumblebee. I don't know. I think they're just the cutest. Um, they're little tiny stuffed animals. If you were just getting into Amigurumi, this might be a really good way to start because it's not a whole lot of, uh, commitment. This is, this is an afternoon project, not a, you know, six week project. So... Um, and then some of them rely a little bit more heavily on the felt than others. So, for example, this raccoon, um, is, is pretty reliant on that little felt face there. Um, otherwise it's just a ball with feet. So, um, yeah, little tails are cute. So. They're pretty cute. I think this, of the set, is probably my favorite book. Um, there are probably ones that I'm going to use more, but these are, hands down, the most adorable uh, teeny tiny little amigurumi patterns. Uh, the other books that I got were a, a quilting book that uses only jelly rolls. So jelly rolls are strips of fabric rolled up into a, like a swirl like these guys. Um, probably zoom in a little bit. Yeah. So you can, you, if you're in Joanne fabric in the quilting area, you can find these jelly rolls. Um, sometimes they're themed. Uh, the last one was called mini crochet creatures. Um... So these are quilts just done in jelly rolls. They're a variety of um, levels of difficulty. I've never actually made a full quilt. I've quilted a few small things. Um, like a, I did a jelly roll uh, table runner. But I, since they were running this promotion, I went ahead and picked this up. And I might give a quilt top a try. Um, and see how I do. But there's a lot of different patterns in here. I was going to look and see if there was a, yeah, there's a picture index of the pattern options. So we'll zoom in a little bit on that. I might have to tip it so that the light's not glaring on the two pages. So there's the different options in patterns. Yeah. So, um, but yeah. I don't know. I thought they were kind of cool. And there's, like I said, there's a variety of difficulties. They've got simple strip piecing, easy corner, uh, half square triangles, log cabins, and advanced techniques. So um, kind of a variety for every skill level in there. And the very last one are these fantasy toys. So they're um, all superheroes and fairies and dragons and unicorns and aliens and such. Um, but they are 3D sewn little stuffed animals. Let me see if I can... Um, and then instructions on how to assemble them. I'm looking for a good picture. Oh, the unicorn's pretty cute. So um, these are... What's that? No, there's no pattern. Yeah, just... just in, so, um, actually it does contain patterns, but they're, they're sewing patterns. So they're, uh, 
they're like pieces to cut out in the back and then match the fabric sizes. But so you can see the unicorn here. Um, there's a really cute dragon. Let me see if there's a good picture of the dragon. Yeah, it's a pretty good picture of the dragon. So there's the dragon, but I have some patterns that I've wanted to try that are 3D stuffed animals and they're a little bit too difficult for me. And so I was hoping if I started with some simpler shapes and uh, smaller things that I might be able to move on to the more difficult one. The one that I want to do is a toothless pattern, again, from How to Train Your Dragon. Um, but it's a little bit too complicated for my skill level for sewing and, like, forming 3D objects while sewing. So, um, I think we've gotten all of the, uh, links to the books in the chat. So if you're looking at any of those, you've got those. Um, none of them are affiliate links, so don't worry about that if that's something that bothers you. Um... All right. Last thing on the list is the Lytherco box. Um, so again, this is a crochet subscription. You get a, well, I'll show you what you get. Um, they always come very nicely packaged unless she's totally out of packaging, which has happened once or twice, but um, usually very nicely packaged. Oh, did a terrible job of unwrapping that. I'm hoping the dark purple is going to indicate what kind of yarn. Oh, not exactly. Um, so this is called the Caplet Tweed Sock. It's 85% Superwash Merino, 15% Donegal Nap. Um, it is 40, sorry, 438 yards or 100 grams. Um, the Donegal Nep is this stuff that's mixed into the yarn. We're going to zoom in a little bit so you can see, but it's these like little tweety bits that get mixed in. It's almost like, I don't know, little bits and pieces of fiber that get spun in with the rest. I'm surprised it's 15% by weight, uh, this nep stuff in here. Um, let's see what else. Um... Runaway Needle Red's asking if I've seen Valerie Church's Old Soul Crochet Animals. She thinks I would like them. I have not. I'm not familiar with them, but I will take a look at them. Um, actually, my husband's got them pulled up for me. They're actually really cute. Um, I'm looking at mostly a koala bear right now, and it's super cute. So I will have to take a look at that when I can look in a little bit more depth. Um, there's a really cute fox that I'm seeing, too. But... Um, He's uh he's got them pulled up on the screen in front of me that I'm reading comments off of so that I can see them. So uh I can see a whole bunch of them. What is that? A sheep? It's pretty cute. It looks like a cloud. <laughs> oh, I lost my screen. Um all right. So with the Lytherco box, you get a yarn. This is the deluxe box. That's what I order. Uh you also get a crochet hook. The hook itself is a uh, clover, a moor hook, and then it is seated into a hand-turned handle. Uh, so this is a husband and wife team. The husband does the hook handles and the wife dyes the yarn. And so this is a... I can't actually read the letter or what this is stamped. It could be a two, which is not really an option. Oh, you know what? It's probably a C. There's a knot right on the bottom of my hook, and so it's obscuring the stamp a little bit. I think it's a C. Um, but we'll check the book. So I think this is a C hook, which is a pretty fine hook. This was 438. So yeah, it's roughly sock weight. Oh, and it says sock. Caplet tweed sock. Let's see. So you get a, a yarn, a hook, a little surprise. Often it's stitch marker, but in this case, it's a little tiny uh, enamel pin of Little Red Riding Hood. And then this is called the Into the Woods Collection. 
Um, and there will be, we're good to open this here. Um, it actually shows you all of the options that were available. So I got merino yarn. There's also a cotton box. Looks like the cotton yarn was sort of a teal and brown. Everybody got a Little Red Riding Hood stitch marker. And then there were Funfetti hooks. Funfetti hooks are like colored instead of wood grain. Um, I always get the natural hooks, which are wood grain. Um, there is also an option of a non-turned hook, and you can just get the regular Clover Amour hook. Um, it looks like my pattern is a beanie. And the... Or rather, my pattern... The pattern that goes with the yarn that I got is a beanie. And the pattern that goes with the uh, cotton is a shawl. However, I do get both patterns in my book. So you can see there's the shawl pattern and... I didn't show the pattern itself. And there is the hat pattern. I was careful. So that is the caplet beanie that works up with my red yarn. So it looks pretty cool. Um, so I'm looking forward. Uh, for those of you who've watched for a long time, you know that I really love opening these. And I'm really bad about making anything from these boxes. So uh, mostly I collect them. And I actually have used the hooks quite a few times. They take a lot of getting used to for me. Um, it's really nice to have the slippery Clover Amour hook top. Um, so it's this nice slippery um, Clover Amour top to it. But the, the handle takes a little bit of getting used to in my hand. I'm used to sort of flicking my hook to, to rotate the hook itself. And... The extra bulk here, while it's really nice on my pinky because it won't cramp, um, does take some getting used to to, like, roll my fingers. So, um, the pin's pretty cute. Oh, Little Red, Red, Little Red Riding Hood has a, uh, a basket full of yarn, too, it looks like. It's kind of cute. All right. Um... Val said, nice for kids because you could sew on eyes. These are like pillows, so they're good huggers. Uh, I think she's referring back to the uh, patterns that she suggested that you can sew the eyes on to. Um, it, I did something similar. So when I made the uh, rag doll, I made one that had safety eyes and the other that had... Um, it had sewn on crocheted eyes. I made basically like crocheted discs and uh, sewed them on. You can also glue felt on. You've got a lot of options for eyes, especially when you're um, making them for really little kids. You got to kind of pick and choose. Um, let's see. Company has. Oh, so Vel's also mentioning the company that the Lyther Co has gorgeous hooks. I really think so. I, I, I'm looking forward to having the whole set. Um, I think I've got two more months to go before I have the whole set of, uh, clover hooks. Um, I think there's only, so it'll be, t it's a 10 month like rotation. And I think she's committed to doing. So if you, I think. If you start at any point and continue for 10 months, that you'll you'll end up with the full set. I'm not positive about that, but I think that's how she's planning on doing it. Um, Let's see. My husband's showing me more of the patterns, and he's got a whale up, and it's really cute. So, uh, He did post the link that was suggested, the old soul crochet. Um, so... Those are, those are pretty neat. So, um, other than that, I don't have a whole lot to show you guys. Um, I haven't done a lot of, um, crocheting. I've worked a little bit on my blanket. It's coming along. I can pull that out and show you. Um, so this is just a crunch stitch blanket. 
which is um, a pretty basic pattern. It's a it's slip stitches worked into crochet, uh, half double crochets and half double crochets worked into slip stitches. So um, it's pretty pretty straightforward type of stitch pattern. Um, it's working up very slow because it's just half double crochets and slip stitches. Um, but it's a nice dense stitch. The yarn, again, is the, the comfy cotton blend, and it's been relatively splitty for me. I have not loved working with it, but um, I'm getting a little bit better. It's got quite a lot of knots. You can see on the back side of my project here, um, only one of these was a ball change. So that's my working thread. So I've got one here. I've got a knot here. So this was a knot. This is a knot. This was a knot. And this, I think, is my ball change when I when I added the second ball. So three knots in the first ball. And then um, my color change here. So not ideal. Um, and again, a lot of splitty yarns. Um, a lot of weird little loops and stuff. So... Um, yeah, I, I'm pretty happy with how it's turning out, but it, like I said, it's working up very slow. Um, just skipping over some comments and then, uh, let's see. Uh, Runaway Needle Red said the hooks look lovely, but the shank is very short and would bother her. Um, it's not all, it, it, so it is a little bit shorter than the clover hooks themselves, but it's not a ton shorter. Um, so there, I know these are not equivalent hook sizes, but the shaft on them is roughly the same. And so you can see you're not losing a whole lot. Um, from one to the next. Yeah. Um. There. It's hard to hold them level, but. So you do lose a little bit of the hook, it looks like. Um, but not, not as much as I, not as much as it appears, honestly. Um, so it gives you kind of a comparison. I'd have to go digging for a C hook. So, um, one of the things that I have noticed that if I really need a little bit of extra on the regular clover hooks, you can, um, pull this, uh, like ergonomic sleeve down a bit and get a little bit more neck out of this. Um, until you get to the thumb rest, which is down here. So you can do that if you absolutely have to on the clover hooks. So you can see the thumb rest is starting to be exposed there. So you can get about this far um, if you absolutely have to, which you obviously could not do on the wooden hooks because they're glued in, I assume. Um, I don't think they're just like pressure fit or anything in there. I think they're glued. So... Um, let's see. Yeah, Vel's got kind of the same problem that I do. The really likes the thick handles, but are too thick for crocheting. Um, unfortunately, I've found that to be a little bit true. Um, I do switch back and forth to these on occasion. Um, but, but they are a little bit heavy in my hand, um, compared to these. Like I said, I... I tend to use my pinky and flick my hook back and forth to tip my, um, to tip the like throat of my hook back and forth as I am working. Um, and that, that motion is just trickier when you've got this bulk in your hand. So, um, Bridget is asking, do I have a hook recommendation for using tiny hooks needed for the projects like the snowflakes for people that hurts their hands um, to have tiny yarn and thin hooks? 
Uh, so I use the Clover Amour steel hooks. Let me see. I've got my hook box here. Um, so Clover makes the tiny, teeniest, tiniest hooks. Um, so this is a one millimeter. And so what they do is, and I'll show you a comparison of like an F hook. They're, they're roughly the same size. I think this is an E hook. So an E hook is a three and a half millimeter. And so you can see there's the difference in the size. Um, so the, the steel hooks are a little bit shorter. They, you're zoomed in too far to show what I'm trying to show, which is why I keep moving them. I'm trying to show the height difference. Yeah, no, it's fine. So the steel hooks are a little bit shorter, like the whole overall, the whole, the overall hook size, but also the like plastic or like silicone part um, is also a little bit shorter. But the size that you actually hold in your hand is pretty similar. Um, so you can kind of see here, it's it's obviously smaller, but but not crazy crazy small. Um, even though the, the tip of the hook is very, very tiny by comparison, three and a half times smaller. Um, I think they go as small as a 0 0.06, sorry, a 0 0.6, um, 1.5, what's the smallest one I can find? That's a 0 0.75, 0 0.9. 1.25, I still think that there is a 0. 0.6 millimeter, but I'll open up the point. Uh, I don't know if we can get in tight enough to see these hook size differences. Um, so there's the there's the different hooks. So for reference, this is a three and a half millimeter, which is a pretty small hook. This is what you would use for like fingering weight yarn. Um, and then you've got your one and your 0 0.75 millimeter hook there. Um, and it looks like on my screen that the 0.75 just looks like a straight stick. But there is actually a teeny tiny hook on here um, that I'm catching with my finger. So... Um, it's something to, uh, try, uh, like, it's a, it's a pretty big challenge to work with yarn small enough that this hook is necessary, but for something like a crochet thread, uh, snowflake or something like that, um, honestly, you probably would end up using like a B hook, which is like a two and a quarter. I don't know if I've got a B hook in here. Um... Or even like the one and a half, which is the largest of the steel hooks. So you can get the steel hooks from Clover as individuals or as a set of seven, I think. Um, turns out the set of seven doesn't seem to go on sale nearly as often as the uh, set of ten does. So I have a standing alert on my Amazon account, or actually on Camel Camel Camel, that sends me a message if the set of 10 goes below $25 and I just buy another set. Um, but I don't have a standing alert on uh, steel hooks and they don't seem to fluctuate nearly as much. But you can use, if they're not on sale, you can use a coupon at Joanne and occasionally they run a 50 or 60 and I think they're like six bucks a piece. And so if you use a 50% off coupon, you're down to three bucks. Um, and you can get like the one size you need. Realistically, most people don't need a 0.6 and a 0.75 and a 0.9. Like, unless you're going to do a whole bunch of thread crochet with like sewing thread, um, you're probably fine with like the one and a half, maybe even the one. Um, but otherwise, I would stick with the smallest hooks in the large set, which is, I think, a B hook at 2.25. So, uh, yeah. So what my husband asked is 
a boy makes an ergonomic handle that looks ridiculous, but is actually pretty comfortable. Um, I don't see that box over here. It might be upstairs, but boy makes an ergonomic handle that has like collars that you put over a hook. And then you open this thing up and you put the hook inside with the collar on it and close it back up. And it's got a really large grip for the front of your hand and a smaller grip on the back end. Um, that could be another option if you use the tiniest collar. Um, a regular steel hook might fit in that. So if you already have a full set of steel hooks that you like, uh, you could maybe, excuse me, put those into a an ergonomic like collar or holder. I have the hiccup, sorry. Um, and you use them like that. Yes. Um, he's gonna maybe post a link or a picture. Oh, it's actually on screen for everybody. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's the that's the thing that uh, I was talking about. So it's a you are able to remove the green top on that. And then one of those little things that look like Fruit Loops down at the bottom are different colors um, that you put over the hook. And then you can uh, close it back up. And uh, then the hook stays in. It wobbles a little bit, but it actually works really well. Um, Yarnology's hooks... Uh, I've used some of their hooks. They've got a bunch of different lines. Um, I don't know about their steel hooks, but they could be very nice. Um, I'm not, I'm not sufficiently familiar with their different lines. Like I said, um, what's that? Oh, do they have the Addy shaped ones that are swing shaped? Um, those I did not care for got some of those somewhere um but yeah they have they have a whole bunch of different hooks i've got ones with flowers up the side those are pretty nice that are made of plastic i've used those a couple of times um i always go back to my clover amours but um val said she's got the yarnology flowered ergonomic ones i have those somewhere Find in, like any of my stuff tonight, um, but I do have the flowered ones somewhere, um, and I like I said I've used those a few times. They're pretty nice, um, especially for plastic hooks, which I'm not generally a fan of. Um, I did really like they had a line that looked just like the furls hooks um, that were made of acrylic and apparently shattered if you dropped them. Um, I've got a couple of those that were really nice. Yeah, the yar the Yarnology luxury hooks. Um, and they were really, really, like, clearly knockoffs of the Furls hooks, but um, apparently shattered if you dropped them. So they stopped selling them. Um, but I wish I had gotten a set of those. I think I have two of them over somewhere. Um, let's see. Um... Helen's, so Bridget saw the boy thing and thought that looks interesting, so that might be an option. Um, Helen's saying she's got a, one of the boy ergonomic uh, hook holders and it works really well for arthritic hands, um, so that's good to know. I had it just because I didn't like how tight I had my pinky when I was crocheting, and it was nice to be able to relax my hand a little bit. Um, Tracy's saying she's got no trouble using all different types of hooks, but her non-dominant hand, um, uh, gets pins and needles every time she crochets. Um, so I suspect you probably are resting your elbow or, or bending your elbow in a way that you're holding. So usually when people are, most people who are crocheting, when they're using their dominant hand, they're holding the hook. 
Um, I hold my hook in my non-dominant hand. I hold it in my right hand, um, but I am left-handed. But generally, this hand is holding the project in some way and, like, helping out. Um, and I find if I rest my elbow, um, you can kind of, like, cut off circulation here. Or if you hold it in a certain way, um, you can kind of basically falls asleep how you're holding it. Um, and you're just really not using it. You might need to um, look up some, like, ergonomics information um, they might suggest like propping your arm differently or holding it differently. Um, it's probably like a falling asleep if I had to guess. Um, and, and there are almost certainly suggestions on the internet on, from reliable sources that, that show you how to sit more ergonomically, um, so that that doesn't happen. Um, tons and tons of people knit and crochet and, and there are, like repetitive stress injuries that you can get from doing that. And so there are physical therapists and, and such that release information and suggestions on how to sit better and, and hold your arms better and hold your wrists and do hand exercises and stretching and all sorts of things. Um, but I won't give any more like suggestion. I, you should look up from a credible source, those types of things. Um, but I have experienced the same thing where I'll, I feel like my, my left hand will start to fall asleep. And usually I just need to reposition it. Like I said, most of the time it's that I'm cutting circulation off down by my elbow um, by resting it against usually a hard surface. Um, let's see. Crafty Caitlin's asking if I've tried lighted hooks. Amazon has a set with metal hooks. I have not seen lit metal hooks light that shines down it. I have lit acrylic hooks. Um, so they're, they're a clear plastic and they're mounted over an LED when you turn them on. Um, I really liked, so the people that I worked with, uh, the previous job that I worked at got me them for my birthday one year. And I really, really wanted to like them. And the part that gave me trouble was there is a switch on the side that turns the light on and off and it hit exactly where my thumb wanted to rest. I think it was my thumb. But one of my fingers rested exactly there and the the little switch had like teeth so that you could move it easily and they just dug into my skin. And so if you hold your hook exactly the same way I do, um, then it's probably not going to work for you. Otherwise, they were really cool. Um, we travel a lot up to see relatives and it's about a three hour drive and, um, we spend a lot of time driving back late at night and, um, a lot of times I don't want to turn on an overhead light, even though it doesn't bother my husband when he's driving, it I just don't want to leave the light on for like three hours while I'm crocheting. And I thought it would be really helpful to have the like lit hooks to for see my stitches. For yeah. For the five minutes before I fall asleep. Um, I was hoping that like crocheting would keep me awake, but it doesn't actually. Um, but what I was hoping is that having the little pinpoint light would make it easier to see the individual stitches, especially like, it it's actually worse around dusk where like you got like kind of weird lighting. Um, at least I find in the car. And so um, I did try the lit hooks and they um, at least the, the set of plastic ones with the acrylic tips. Um, he's showing me the metal ones on screen right now. They look pretty cool. Um, so the metal ones have interchangeable heads rather than being separate hooks ones that I had were all separate hooks. Um, and they were an interesting set because they all came with batteries. And I think that just the price in batteries was close to like the value of the set. Cause I think every hook took like three button cell batteries. And I think it was a set of like nine or 10. Um, and I think the whole set was like in the 20 ish dollar range. So just for, you know, 27 button cell batteries, you're starting to approach the cost of the set. What's that? 
the yeah we could order those and and uh open them up next week um i don't know probably 12 just because more options unless there's a difference in rating Two to eight. So we're going to get a hold of the uh, metal uh, light up crochet hooks with the interchangeable heads and we'll open those up next week. So assuming that they come, Amazon's shipping's been real weird. It's starting, be starting to get more normal, but it is still a little bit delayed. Um, Let's see. Uh, Runaway Needle Red likes the Clover Soft Touch hooks, but uh, the go to or her go to are also the Amore. Um, I don't care for this Soft Touch as nearly as much as I like the uh, Amores. I was looking to see there's an entire box of my hooks missing, and that's what I keep turning and looking for. Um, so the Amores have this rounded handle like this. The soft touch are all a weird, like, amber color um, rather than being multicolored, and they're flat. And they are meant for people who uh, knife grip. So these are meant for a pencil grip. They're, they're designed to be held like a pencil. Um, the soft touches are meant to be held like a knife, like this. Um, I hold my soft touch, uh, sorry, my amours like a knife. Um, which is probably why they're not perfect for my pinky because they're not actually meant to be there. They're meant to be up here. So, um, I like the Amours better than I like the soft touch. They're probably negligibly different, but these are the ones that I'm attached to. Um, Runaway Needle Red also says that she's got some of the battery hooks and they're not bad for a short period. That's pretty much how I found them to be. It was nice for very specific things. Um, black yarn was another thing that they were really good for. Um, they might also be good for, like, tough to see, like, stitches. Yarns that give you tough to see stitches. So, like a uh, Lion Brand Homespun or uh, Red Heart Scrubby Yarn or things like that where it's difficult to see your stitches, a little extra light right at the point where you're trying to work um, might be somewhat helpful. So, um, all right. If anybody else has got questions, uh, now is the time to throw them in. Um, I know we haven't been streaming all that long, but that's really all I've got to talk about tonight. Um, and thank you all for joining me on a Thursday stream. I know um, we generally stream on Tuesdays, but Tuesday I just wasn't up for streaming that night, so um, decided to push it back to Thursday. We should be streaming on Tuesday next week at 8 o'clock. Um, that's our general streaming time. I don't th know of anything that will stop that from happening. Well, you want to see if people would rather stream Thursday? It seems like the best bet. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, if you guys want to let me know too if if Thursdays work better than Tuesdays for you guys um that's good information for me um we we're a little bit flexible uh so the only day that I can't commit to long term is Wednesday nights and that's my local crochet night but that's canceled due to covid right now so um other than that, I don't I don't think I have weekly commitments at any regular interval. Uh, I have a question about the yarn weight for the mini crochet creatures. So let's see what the author suggests. Um, they are suggesting medium weight yarn. So just regular worsted weight um, crochet yarn. Um... Well, that's for the chick. Let's see. Uh, yeah, all of these are suggesting medium weight. And they're suggesting roughly 22 yards for for most of the animals as I'm looking through here. Um, 
16 and a half for a main color for the butterfly. Yeah, it's, all of these are less than 50 yards, which would be about 25 grams of uh, worsted weight. So a 100-gram uh, ball of worsted weight yarn is roughly 200 yards. Um, and so 50 yards would be 25 grams. And so these are all less than 25 grams. So this would be a really good way if you had some little bits and pieces of yarn to use up um, that you could make some different things. Like these little bears on the front, um, they're only a couple of rows of brown and then a couple of rows of a single color. And so if you had some really nice yarn that you had just a few grams of at the end, um, that... But yeah, we, uh, you could just go ahead and use just little bits and pieces up. Um, Vail, Vail had asked us to pull bamboo yarns. So let's try and do that next week too. Um, I totally lost track of that. So, um, somewhere in the back of my head, I knew that we needed to do that and, and let's try and pull that for next week and, and pull some bamboo yarns out and we can kind of compare them. Because um, I think I have probably three or four options that I can think of off the top of my head. Um, and yeah, Tracy says it's perfect for scrap yarn. And I, that's exactly what I would use it for is you got all these little uh, scraps of yarn after you're done with a project. Um, and I hate when there's... I hate when you run a project to like the last possible row that you can, but you still have like 10, 12 grams of yarn left, but it's not enough to do the another repeat or another row. And and then you just have this like little nub of yarn. I usually like wrap them up in my fingers and then wrap the yarn around. And it's just this like little bit of yarn. Um actually I have a I'm probably gonna knock the mermaid down. But I throw all of those in this uh, little bin here. So I have some of these Lion Brand bonbons. But then I have all these, like, little scraps and bits of yarn. Um, but, like, this here is probably 20 grams of worsted weight yarn. And so you could make, like, a little stripey shirt. Um, but you got all these little options here of just scrap yarn. So, um, yeah. Let's see. Uh, Vel says, any day is good. Just happy when Facebook tells me about changes. Yeah, we, we do try and post. I, sometimes it's really late in the game. Um, it might be 7.30 before we decide we're not going to be able to stream. Um, part of that is I generally work until about 6. And then I come home and I rest for a little bit. And I'm like, ooh, I just don't have it in me tonight to to do a full uh a full live stream. So we make those decisions usually quite late. Um but I do try to always post on Facebook and Instagram and we've got the uh the ad experiments and crafting up on the screen there. Um so you can find me on both Facebook and Instagram at experiments and crafting and then I also do post uh when we're not streaming on the uh community tab of YouTube. So if you get to YouTube and you think there should be a stream, you can go over to the community tab on the channel and it should show there as well. Um, I don't really know how the community tab works exactly on YouTube, but I know I can post pictures that show that we're not po that we're not streaming. So that's what I use it for right now. Um, I think we can also use it for polls and stuff, but I just don't know how Facebook gets like the notifications out. So... Um, we could potentially do a poll on, on Facebook though, and ask whether people Facebook would, or, or sorry, on YouTube, um, and ask whether people would prefer Tuesdays or Thursdays or which would be generally better for them. Um, cause I'm relatively flexible either way on the two days. Um, Runaway Needle Red said she's been making mask ear savers for nurses with scraps, um, yeah, so I I think I mentioned this last week. I had to wear an ear like ear loop mask for like half of one day and it was really really bothersome. 
the uh, masks that I've made myself and several other people um, have been the kind that goes behind your neck and then across the top of your head. And so it just doesn't touch your ears. But for a really long period of time, there was like no availability on um, elastic. And so mine are made with elastic that I had on hand. And then um, I think you're finally able to get elastic now. Um, though the elastic I bought from Amazon recently was pretty terrible. So not not particularly high quality. Um, what was I going to say? Pull. Oh, I know what I was going to say. So on Facebook, I have a page, which is like sort of a business page where I can post things out. But as part of the page, it allows you to run a group. And the Facebook group is existent. And is actually getting some attention, like attention. Um, there's people actually posting in there. Um, there's a little bit of a community starting to develop. I think there's maybe ten people total who use uh, the Facebook group, but it is starting to become a community. So if you're interested in sharing projects with me and with other people, um. Find me on Facebook at Experiments in Crafting and then find the Facebook group and request to join that. It should auto approve you. Um, there, I think I put some really, really mild conditions on the like conditions to join, which I think you had to have a Facebook account for six months. And I think you have to answer like two questions. Um, but if you fill those out, then it should auto accept you. If it doesn't auto accept you, then I just go through and approve um, semi regularly. So, but all of you who are regular users, I would encourage you to uh, head over there and join just so that you can share um, posts not only with me, but with each other. So, um, and then of course, if you don't use Facebook or, or you, prefer Instagram or you don't use either. Um, you know, there I'm glad to just have you on the stream and and chat with you uh during the live stream. So um if you use Instagram instead of Facebook, you can message me on Instagram and share pictures or tag me in posts so that you can share what you're working on as well. Um but but yeah for those of you who do use Facebook, um if you find the Facebook group you can share pictures with each other and with me. So everyone can kind of see what you're working on while I'm not live streaming. So um, I think that's about it for me for the evening. Um, so unless there's any last minute questions, crochet or yarn or uh, whatever related. Um, otherwise, I'm probably going to wrap up for the evening. Um, so, yeah, I guess I will wrap it up for the evening and say thank you for watching, and I hope that all of you can join us on, we'll probably stream Tuesday next week, and then maybe I'll put a poll up and, and we'll decide if we're going to move the stream from Tuesday to Thursday, since that uh, seems like maybe it will work a little bit better for some people um possibly me <laughs> uh so all right everyone have a good rest of your week and see you on tuesday thanks for watching bye